Howdy y'all. So in previous videos, we've talked about all of the ancient Native American mounds that can be found throughout both North and South America. And this is really interesting for me to talk about. And it's been really fascinating me lately. I've been diving into really all the aspects that I could find that I think relate to Native American cultures. And really, all of these cultures seem to have cultures that predated them. So what I mean is that when European settlers arrived to different areas in North and South America, they found certain cultures already here, Native American cultures already here. However, when they spoke with the leaders of those Native American tribes and different societies, they found that the Native Americans that were here had stories of previous Native Americans. And most of these previous Native Americans, at least according to the natives that were here when European settlers arrived, were the natives, these larger Native Americans, um, basically built out the areas that the modern, at the time, Native Americans were occupying. Now, hopefully that wasn't too convoluted to understand. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that there was a society of Native Americans, the Hopewell and the Adena mainly, but heading into South America, we have a lot of different referenced Native American groups that are said to have prospered before the Native Americans that the European, mainly Spanish settlers, came upon in the 15 and 1600s. Now, this is where I want to get into a discussion about Patagonia. Now, one of the first things I found interesting is when we look at Patagonia, we are told that not only are there mounds everywhere, and these mounds were used as the different homes and the burial sites, they were connected to one another, and they were very intricate, which is something we don't really see a lot of modern day historians give credit to for these ancient earthworks, how intricate and well designed they really were. But I digress from that. Now, when we look into South America, and more specifically, um, the very southernmost point of South America, uh, what we could refer to today as Patagonia, this is Ferdinand Magellan. Now, we all know Magellan's map and his circumnavigation of the world. However, in the 1520s, it is written that Ferdinand Magellan and his crew came upon the shores of basically undiscovered lands in the far south. And he would go on to name this land Patagal, meaning land of the big feet, aka big foot. So already here we have a certain dichotomy that I hadn't really heard mentioned before. But this whole region of Patagonia basically means land of the big foot or land where there is big foots or land of you know, certain creatures, certain humanoids that at least according to the explorers and the settlers back then were abnormally large. And this stood out to them enough to name the entire region after how large these individuals really were. Now, I'm going to read you a quick description of exactly what is said to have happened when Ferdinand Magellan and his crew came upon the first giant that they encountered in Patagonia. One day, we suddenly saw a naked man of giant stature on the shore of the port, dancing, singing, and throwing dust on his head. The Captain General, Magellan, sent one of our men to the giant so that he might perform the same actions as a sign of peace. Having done that, the man led the giant to an islet where the Captain General was waiting. When the giant was in the captain general's and our presence, he marveled greatly and made signs with one finger raised upward, believing that we had come from the sky. Now, according to Magellan's initial reports and the reports of his crew, these giant men were anywhere from 11 to 15 feet tall. Now, early maps throughout the 15 and 1600s would label the area of Patagonia as the land of the giants. And they would often depict giant human-like creatures within this region. And this is often referenced in this old world history. When we look at these maps, many people point to different maps that have giants that are represented on them, but we never really dive into it. So I wanted to try and do that a little bit today. Now, there is not a lot of information here. 
Basically, they tell us that the myth of these giants in Patagonia continued into the 1700s as new countries began to explore the same area. Now, we have the story of Commodore John Byron from the United Kingdom, who in 1766 on the HMS Dolphin was making his own uh, circumnavigation of the world. And he reported that he, when traveling past Patagonia, had discovered nine foot tall giants that were residing in the area. Now, by 1773, so roughly seven years after his initial report, the United Kingdom government officially changed all reports to say that the Patagonia giants were merely six foot to six and a half foot tall. Now, that is still a very large human being, especially for this time period, but it is nothing like the initial reports of these Patagonia giants being nine feet tall and the reports from 200 years prior to that that says these giants were anywhere from 11 to 15 feet tall. So one way to look at it, if we are to believe all these reports and take them with a grain of salt, we can see that the lineage of this giant community in Patagonia, whether it was real or not, from the reports, we can see that the lineage would imply that these giants were getting smaller throughout time. And while they were once 12, 13, 14 feet tall, we have by the 1700s that they're being reported at about nine feet and under. And then, you know, from this point forward, we really have the whole idea being that, yes, they were very large in stature, but none of them really exceeded seven feet tall. And any reports of a giant or giant skeletons being discovered over seven feet tall were merely exaggerations. And that's really the idea that was perpetuated throughout the 1800s and onward. And that's the idea that science really maintains today, that anything that says there was a 15 foot giant or anything above that, because there are reports of very large giants, 30, 40 foot tall giants. However, we are told these are completely hoaxes. There was no proof that any of this ever existed. And Although the reports are widely spread, we do have even the Smithsonian coming in and taking a look at some of these reports of massive giants. What we are told is they are merely all hoaxes. Now, that gets me into what I want to say is the last part of this video. The most interesting part about this narrative, and really about a lot of the narratives as it relates to Native Americans and their cultures, their societies, what they looked like, what they did, etc., etc. I think the most interesting part is that there's always plausible deniability. That's something that the storytellers, the history writers, really seem to focus on is plausible deniability. There's always a way to explain things from the past. And I reference that because in the current narrative of Patagonia, we are told that the European settlers who arrived and called these Patagonians giants were actually basically mistaken. And they say this was due in part to the Native Americans of Patagonia and their different, I want to call it costumes, but their different attire that they would wear for their rituals and sacrifices and things of that nature. Basically, these two groups that were told occupied this land were the Tehuche and the Selk Nam. Now the Selk Nam are also known as the Ona and the Ona are well documented as having complex rituals that both shocked and scared European settlers into believing that they were actually demons or somehow possessed. And what I'm going to show you now are just some of these images that I was able to uncover from the Smithsonian archives of the Selknam or Ona peoples in their ritual dress or their ritual attire. And this is just my opinion now, but it certainly appears that a lot of these costumes were later reinterpreted into what we would call the 1800s and 1900s horror. Um, when we read about HP Lovecraft and we read about witchcraft and things like that, all these different things that are associated to this sort of attire 
that we see being displayed by the Selknam or Ona people in their rituals. So I found that to be very interesting. I don't know if there's anybody on my channel who plays video games. I do game quite a bit. And one of the games that this instantly reminded me of is the Silent Hill series. That is a survival horror series of video games. And what you'll come to find is a lot of these different headdresses and these different costumes and this different attire that is being worn for these sacrificial rituals by the Selknam and Ona people. A lot of these different ideas of representation, basically to represent the different demons and deities, these were reinterpreted in later times. And I can definitely see the influence in games like Silent Hill. Basically, you can see this sort of horrifying or shocking imagery and i'm going to edit some of these images but they're just really interesting so hopefully this was eye-opening to you because i had never seen this before and as soon as i saw these images i got a sort of tingle in the spine i knew something wasn't right and that's why i wanted to point out and share these images with you basically we have this idea at least in the mainstream narrative that the idea of giants was disregarded by the 1800s and by this time period, the 1800s, we're led to believe that we had a great understanding of the earth or of the realm on which we walk. And yet at the same time, we are still making discoveries like this one. This photograph is officially from the Library of Congress. And this is said to be an Ona man in the late 1800s who stood at seven feet, four inches tall. Now, besides his height and it being an official United States photograph, which I wanted to point out, one thing I did notice is that this is said to be a full grown adult man. And you'll notice here that he appears to be very much hairless. Now, I point that out because in the same Library of Congress of the United States of America, we also have this photograph, which is said to be a group of Ona or Selknam women, and they are said to be almost six feet tall, which by itself is very interesting. But what I noticed, or what, what stood out to me, is that they appear to be much hairier than your average modern day woman. They appear to have much more body hair to the point that I thought it was worth mentioning. Because when we look at the overarching category of Patagonia and the Patagonia giants and how the word Patagonia basically lends itself to the idea of Bigfoot or a Bigfoot. And then we look at modern day interpretations of Bigfoot. We always see them being not only abnormally large, but also covered with hair. And I think it's very interesting to note that the initial reports and photographs of the people of the Selknam or Ona society, it appears that the men, while abnormally or overly large, are hairless or have very much less hair than the women who are also of a larger stature than your average woman. So to point that out, I think it leads in the direction of how some of these myths about Bigfoot were perpetuated all throughout the United States, but it also points in this direction of very many questions. We look through these images and we look through Patagonia and other areas around the world that were labeled as having giants in the 15, 16, and 1700s. And it leads to many different questions. Now, on the oldest maps of the world, we can see the areas of the poles being depicted as green or having different cities being maneuverable, being able to be traveled and traversed by your common settler or explorer. Now, once we get to the 17 and 1800s, we begin to see the poles north and south being frozen over and depicted much like they are today. Now, one thing I want to point out is the possibility of different sorts of myths surrounding giants stemming from the South Pole. I'm not going to get too much into it, but if you look into different theories regarding a convex or hollow earth model, you will find the idea that different entities were able to enter or exit our realm from a sort of barrier that exists at the southernmost point of our world. 
Now, to cross this barrier, one of the first land masses you would encounter would be Patagonia and would be South America. So just a little food for thought there before I end the video. But I'm going to wrap it up there. I want to say thank you so much for being here. I appreciate everyone who's taken the time to come to this channel and share your thoughts and ideas with me. It's been a little while since I've put out a video. I just wanted to address that. I've been very busy lately trying to catch up with work and trying to make sure the income is right before I take time out of that to make these videos, which I love doing a lot more than work. Making these videos has opened up my eyes not only to new information nearly every single day, but also given me a better respect for the rest of the world around me, meaning I've learned to value my time quite a bit more, and I've learned to try and take joy in little things that I didn't think I had time for before. Now, along those lines, one of the reasons I've been making videos, at least in the last week or so, is my family and I actually went and adopted a puppy. So that's something really new and exciting, something I'm really happy about, that I've been taking a lot of time with this week. Now, I've been doing a lot of research throughout that time. I just haven't really found the extra time to put it into videos. But that being said, and as I mentioned previously, there are many new ideas, videos, concepts in the works right now. I have a lot of videos that I've begun and I'm planning on wrapping them up in the oncoming weeks. So this next month or so, I'm planning to work pretty steadfast and find time to complete all of these ideas and videos and share them with you. And I just look forward to you being here and sharing your ideas and the things that inspired you in these videos and letting me know what stood out to you, what things you want to hear me talk about more, and what things you think we need to do even more research on. So I appreciate all of you being here. Again, I just want to extend a huge thank you. And I want to hear your thoughts and comments about Patagonia, about the Giants, about the Patagonia Native Americans and their different rituals. I want to hear everything you think down below. We will share ideas together and we will talk again very soon on the next video.